Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with my toe. Today, I want to take a look at Supreme Court stacking and the motives behind it. And I'm going to tell you, there's a deep motive that they don't even know is which is causing them to do this kind of thing. But I want to encourage first those who also pray that we pray for our leaders and our nation, that they would be converted and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and understand God's laws are good for man and not for bad. Now, let's take a look at it. What is the motives? One of them might be that they want to grasp more power. You know, and it's kind of obvious that they can take away and take, you know, the rights of people and control. And that control would be to take away the Second Amendment, uh, you know, the right to bear arms. Perhaps they want to stack the court also to restrict religious freedom, to take away freedom of speech. All of these things are more control. But I think there's a deeper issue and a deeper reason why people want to stack the Supreme Court. And that issue is guilt and conscience. You see, God has built into man a conscience. If you want to take a look at a Romans 1 through chapter 3, you will see these kind of things that God talks about. And we're going to go over a few verses of that. With this, their conscience is bothering them. Why is it bothering them? Because they are breaking the law that is written in their hearts. You know, that that's the motive. You know, the, the law is written into their hearts, and they debate within themselves through their thoughts and their conscience, and they know it's wrong. You know, you can change the marriage laws. You can allow divorce. But any time that you do something wrong in your heart, you know it's wrong. You got two choices of action. One is you can confess and say, I failed and go on with your life because you're in Jesus Christ. Or the other motive would be you can deny that this is a sin and you're going to cover it up. And what is the best way to cover up your sin? Change the laws of God and make them meaningless. And when that starts to come up and bother you, what's the next step? Make a Supreme Court, a Supreme Judge filled that will convert your laws that are not good into laws that will make you feel better. But you know what you cannot stamp out? Your conscience. You know, if you're depressed, it's probably, if you're not some kind of mental problem you with physical imbalances, then it's probably guilt. Your conscience you need that load lifted. You need Jesus Christ to come into you. All right, so what happens? These people here are of a different mindset than anybody else. And let me prove it to you from reading something from Romans one twenty eight through 32. And this was written 2,000 years ago by the Apostle Paul. And here's first first verse in 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You know, it comes to a point when you won't listen to conscience anymore. God says, you know what? You're over to a reprobate mind. That means it cannot be corrected. It is turned to a point where it, it, there is almost no hope. The only hope is Jesus Christ coming to him and confessing your sins and getting that burden off of you. So, they didn't want to retain God in the knowledge, and they're given over to a reprobate mind. Does that sound like our leaders today? To do those things which are not convenient. To do things that don't even make sense sometimes. To allow people to come over the border to be put in cages doesn't make sense. And you know, in our heart we know these laws because... If somebody was to take away a parking space from you that you're getting ready to pull into and they cut you off, you know it's wrong. I don't care what side of the issue you are when it comes to the border. When you see kids in cages, it's wrong. If you could do something about it, you got to. You know, uh, it, it, I don't care which issue, which side you're on. It is wrong to see people in cages. Slavery was wrong, and yet it was tolerated by even Christians, supposed Christians. Why? They changed the law. They cut, they severed their conscience 
And that is what we're going on today. That's exactly what's happening. In verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. I'm going to do whatever I want. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness. You know, that is the big problem today. You know, what is socialism to the degree that people want to burn everything down? It is coveting, envying what your neighbor has, even if they work for it. What is the matter with these people? They're reprobate minds. Maliciousness, full of envy, murder. You know, and you don't have to murder, according to Jesus, to be a murderer, although we got some of those. All right? If you hate your brother, or you hate your sister, if you hate a stranger, Jesus says you're guilty of murder. It's what's in the mind. I mean, just because you didn't carry it out. You cannot be haters of other people and be right with God. They're boasters. Do we have that today? Do we have that in our politics today? Boasters, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, inventors of evil thing, disobedient to parents. These are all of the things that are outlined in Romans. I'm not reading it exactly. I'm going to go over the key words. And we'll get into some bigger ones. But this is, this is what you get when you have leaders that are out for themselves and not out for the people. They really want the Supreme Court to take away the guilt and their conscience. But there is somebody supreme over that Supreme Court, and it ain't going away. And it's not proper English, but it ain't going away unless you have given it to God to take it away from you. You're carrying a burden upon you and you severed your conscience from your heart. So we'll go on. Without understanding, they don't even understanding what they're doing. That's why the underlying issue is not power and control. It is conscience and it is guilt. They know they are sinners and will not face up to it. Christian, be in prayer for them. Here's the one that we really see today, covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. You know, we have a covenant. It all started a while back with sanctuary cities. You know, then it was for uh, illegal aliens or undocumented aliens. Now they have sanctuary cities for people that have guns. They, Wait a second. You know, you're breaking the Constitution uh, you're undermining the federal government with these sanctuary cities. These things should be worked out in proper debate, not backbiting debate, not making you know, law not in effect one place that's in another. You know, they try to use a word that they took from the Bible because there were sanctuary cities for people who murdered people by accident, not meaning to, that they can go to that city and live and not have justice that was unfair upon them unless they left the city. You know, uh, God set those cities up. The sanctuary set up now, God sets up all the governments. There's no reason to have sanctuary cities. We should all obey the law. And we should debate about that in the spirit of the Lord before we make such decisions. So the covenant break is trying to take away the Second Amendment, restricting free speech. These are all things that are in our Constitution. Do you know when there's rioting and uh, the police don't do anything? In a sense, they're breaking the covenant. When somebody breaks the Constitution, takes away somebody else's rights and the police don't enforce it, they're breaking the Constitution. They're covenant breakers. Without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful. You see, you can't give mercy to people that are on your side, but not give mercy to people that are contrary to you. Mercy should be extended equally. Justice should be blind. Oh, is our world in a heap of trouble today? So what is the ending of this? Well, in verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of debt, not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do it. You see, 
this is what it really is. The more people that are sinning, the better I can feel about myself. If you're of that reprobate mind. But again, the law is written in your heart. You cannot deny the guilt that is upon you. Are you depressed? Are you anxious? Are you upset? Are you, you getting all of the laws passed that you wanted and you still come up wanting? What is the reason? Because you're guilty. You see, Jesus didn't come in the, into the world to condemn sinners. Because according to the gospel, they're condemned already. Every one of us that is born is born condemned. We sin and we get better at sin as we get older. And we get better at covering it. But you're never going to prosper covering your sin. There is only one answer. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. So whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christian brothers and sisters, that's what we should be praying for. Pray that people would get saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, they're not going to be happy sinning. So tell them about Jesus because he lifts the burden. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease. Thank <laughs> you.